All right, you're live. Great. Welcome everyone to the June 4th, 2020 uh, Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Uh, this is our first meeting since uh, I think January. And uh, so this is actually the first meeting that um, I am officially chairing and we do have some new commissioners and just to make it more fun, we obviously have all this technology. So uh, obviously hopefully uh, patience with everyone and we can get through this. Um, uh, Susan, did you want to uh, address exactly how we um, should be dealing with the public invited to be heard or do I just deal with that? Uh, because there's, there's a note about um, the streaming and, and addressing everyone. Are we live streaming or is that still? Yep. Okay. We're live streaming and I've got your instructions on the screen okay. for everyone okay. to see. Um, the public can call in at the appropriate times during the meeting. So go ahead. Okay, great. And so I will, uh, I'll repeat some of this information as well when, when the uh, time is appropriate, but um, uh, we will be posting this information up on the screen for anyone to call in. Uh, again, patience uh, will be appreciated. Uh, so uh, these meetings are being held remotely uh, due to the governor's uh, safer at home order. It went into effect on April 27th. Uh, you can watch the meeting uh, live stream on YouTube and the city's channel uh, or on uh, longmontpublicmedia.org. Okay, so at this point we will uh, call roll. Okay, Commissioner Carpenter. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Hardy's. Here. Commissioner Gayu. Here. Commissioner Lane. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Goon. Here. Commissioner Bagwell. Can she hear me? <laughs> Commissioner Here. Bagwell. Oh, thanks. Commissioner Sib Sibley. Here. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Thank you, everyone. Great. Uh, so our next uh, meeting agenda item uh, number two would be approval of the January 2020 meeting minutes. I make a motion to approve the January 2020 minutes. Second. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Um, Maria, do we have do we have who that was? Yes, I do. Okay. okay Thank perfect. you. Yeah. All right. Okay, we have a motion and a second. So all in favor of approving the January minutes, uh, please say aye and raise your hand. Keep it up there for a little bit so everybody can get the time to record. Maria, you let us know. Uh, any opposed? None. So motion carries unanimously. Um, so uh, number, our item number three is report from the chair. So this is where I will get in a little bit more to the uh, public invited to be heard. So anyone that wishes to speak during public invited to be heard uh, or during a uh, public hearing, which is basically um, item five, that'd be any topics that are not on the agenda. Um, you would need to watch the live stream of the meeting. Well, and these, when that time comes, these instructions will pop up on the screen. Um, Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Each speaker will be asked to state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding with their comments. And uh, please remember to uh, mute the live stream when you are called upon to speak so that we don't get uh, echo. All right. Uh, if there are any troubles, do we, do I, Susan, you want me to give out this uh, phone number here for anybody to jump uh, if there are issues? Uh, no, they should have received that privately via an email. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, they you can reach out to um, I believe it's Maria or uh, Jade or via email to all of us on staff here. Okay, great. All right, so item number four is communications from our HPC staff liaison. All right, hello commissioners and council member Rodriguez. Uh, it's nice to virtually meet you all. Um, I'm sure you're aware that Karen Bryant is no longer with the city and I'll be taking over as the liaison. Um, just a few things since uh, your last January meeting, we've given out two administrative COAs, uh, one for 250 Kimbark for a heat pump and one for a new sign at the Dickens Opera House, which if you've been downtown, you might've seen already um, in place. Uh, the sign was just to replace the old uh, tavern sign. Uh, my last note is that previously we decided to host the July meeting on July 9th instead of the 2nd, given the 4th of July holiday. Um, so from what I know, we will be having this meeting. I've received an application already. Um, and as of today, it should still be on Zoom. So that's all I have for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, uh, so item number five is our public invited to be heard. So this is, if there's anyone out there in the audience that would, uh, in the virtual audience that would like to uh, speak on a topic that is not on the agenda. So we'll have the communication information up on the screen and we'll all sit here for a few minutes to see if there is in fact anyone uh, wishing to speak to an alternate item. And Susan, you'll just tell us when you're reasonably sure that no one is out there. Yes, Mayor, uh, sorry, Chair. Yeah, chair, just Chair. <laughs> No getting interest. my getting my <laughs> meetings confused there. Um, yes, we've got uh, a couple of viewers. I know I am one of them, so I don't know if other staff are also viewers or if we actually have the public. So we'll give them, uh, say, three or four minutes here to uh, see the information because uh, there is a slight delay in the stream anytime I display something.
Chair, that's been a little bit longer than three minutes. So okay. I will leave the room unlocked for just another 30 seconds until my uh, slide disappears okay. from the live stream. And I do not see anyone that has called in yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, it's fairly rare for people to just come to the uh, HPC. Uh, so I think we'll uh, move on uh, to item number six, A, uh, under new business, which would be a state income tax credit application for 917 Fourth Avenue. So Ms. Kruger, do you have a uh, staff presentation for us? Yes, I'm happy to give an overview. Um, so 917 Fourth Avenue uh, is a bungalow style home built in 1912. Um, the work that uh, Mr. Pillar is proposing is fixing the garage door and um, the metal supporting the door broke um, this past February and he fixed it um, immediately after. And then he was wanting to start repainting the exterior of his home. Um, and I believe the date for repainting was supposed to start on May 15th and be done by the end of May. So this is completed work. Um, the home is more than 50 years, years old and is, of course, part of the historic West Side District. So it was listed um, in 1987. I, um, in my staff recommendation, I approve or I recommend approval of um, the pre preliminary state income tax credit um, for both parts of the work. Upon further research though, I found that the garage was not added to the home until 1995, um, which therefore would make the work on the garage um, not eligible for the tax credit. So I would still recommend um, the credit for the painting of the home, um, but not for the garage door. Okay, great. Uh, do any of the commissioners have a question for staff? Um, I do. It was my understanding that painting alone might not be applicable for state tax credit, that it only if painting was done in conjunction with um, repair or replacement of siding or something of that nature. That was not my understanding and um, perhaps I misunderstood that though. I'm happy to ask um, History Colorado and confirm that there does not need to be any addition with, with that. Uh, yeah, I would recommend asking the tax credit staff liaison at History Colorado. I believe there is also a um, financial uh, consideration. I think they have to spend a certain amount and above $5,000 in order to make sure it meets that tax credit. So I would double check with Joseph Saldivar at History Colorado. That is correct. There is a, a, an amount that you need to surpass in order to be eligible. Um, so I, I do need to confirm that with without the garage that the, the painting would still be eligible in addition to confirming that. Uh, Commissioner Bagwell. Commissioner, one moment, you need to unmute. Uh, point of clarification for staff. Uh, in the past, we've overridden it several times, but in the past, we usually ask the applicant, uh, they need permission from us first before they actually do the work and receive the tax credit. And, um, and, th and that usually, you know, we, then those problems are resolved before, um, before they actually do the work. Thank you for that clarification, Commissioner. I believe that the reason the work um, went ahead of one, one, the garage needed to be fixed because it was not operating as functional. And the painting, um, given the time of COVID and the pandemic, um, it's been challenging to get 
people to do any kind of work and scheduling has been a challenge. Understand, thank you. And the paperwork actually says the repainting is 10,500. So I think we're above the 5,000 there. Okay, um, we can uh, certainly discuss this uh, further as we move on, but uh, I think it might be appropriate for us to take the um, any information or presentation from the applicant. Susan, can we get that set up? Neil, can you unmute yourself and turn your camera on? There you go. Can you turn your camera on, sir? I'm trying. Yeah, the video thing. Uh, it's all right, sir, if you can't find it, because it looks like the camera is active, but it's black. So um, you may have told your system not to use your camera. So if you well, want to go ahead. you I'm you not can... very good looking anyway, so. <laughs> it's all right, sir. Um, but as, as far as the painting is concerned, uh, we just have it under contract. It has not been started or completed. Oh. Do people hear me? Yes. So, um, okay. Um, do, are there any commissioners that have a question for the applicant? Chair, I see none. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, then I think we will move into uh, the uh, public hearing stage of this application. So if there's anybody out there um, that would like to speak to this application, um, we'll now open up the um, uh, public hearing portion of this meeting. And again, uh, appreciate your patience, but uh, the instructions will pop up on the screen and then uh, go ahead and call in if you'd like to speak about it on the application.
Chair, it's been a couple of minutes and I see no one has uh, entered our waiting area. Okay. Uh, well, then at this point, we will close the public hearing. Um, I have a couple of thoughts or questions, but I'd like to hear from um, if there are any other thoughts, statements, discussion items from commissioners. I don't see anybody. Um, so my, the, my only question, I don't necessarily have a problem with the uh, tax credit. And I think that we ought to be able to make it conditional upon um, it actually complying with state guidelines. My only question would be if the painting hasn't been done, then the paint colors that are on the house um, are obviously not the intended colors. And I don't believe that there were intended colors submitted as part of the package. And I would feel more comfortable if we, uh, if we were approving a tax credit application that had proposed colors in them so that we were pretty sure that we weren't improving an application that was gonna paint them, you know, bronco, blue and orange or something. Not that that would be, um, uh, <laughs> not, that it, not that I'm suggesting you're doing that. Uh, however, uh, do you have the colors selected and can those be shared with staff, uh, Mr. Cohen? Chair, it looks like another uh, person needs to be admitted from the family there, so I'm gonna do that. They may be having audio technical difficulties here. Okay. We'll give Cindy just a minute here to get connected. Cindy, can you hear us? I can. Okay. Did one of you want to respond to the chair? Here you go. I think we might be able to see him now. Yes, we submitted um, uh, pictures of the house with the application. The ho house is gray with white and green trim, and we're keeping the same colors. It's a hunter green, not Christmas green. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I did go uh, swing by the house uh, because the application had, or at least the, our copy of the application looked like more, mostly black and white pictures. But, um, but if it's just a question of keeping the same colors, um, I, I don't have any issue with that. Too. Yeah, no, no changes. So, okay, wonderful. Um, well, then it would appear that we'd be ready for a motion. Um, again, I think it might be wise if that motion included uh, some language about this being conditional upon uh, state's approval uh, of a tax credit application for painting only. Uh, anyone would have a commissioner that would uh, propose a motion? I'm happy to propose that motion since I'm the one who brought it up in the first place. Um, and I do have the Colorado revised statutes up on this. And when it talks about exterior work, it does not talk about painting, um, but I would prefer to have um, some confirmation one way or the other on that. So I make the motion that we would approve this if it meets state statute and is confirmed by um, History Colorado staff. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second that. Oh. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Uh, all in favor of approving conditionally the application for, let me just get the address correct here, 917 4th Avenue uh, for the house only, correct? Um, then please uh, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Hold them up there for a minute. Any opposed? No, nope. so it looks like we have a, a motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Neil, we're gonna uh, let you stay if you'd like to continue. If you just wanna mute yourself and hide your camera, that would be fine or you're welcome to leave the meeting.
Okay, we'll probably leave the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is item 6B, a certificate of appropriate, appropriateness for 1005 Third Avenue. Um, again, Ms. Kruger, do you have a uh, staff presentation for us? Yes, I'm happy to give an overview. Um, so this was a home, the Kistler Gunning House was designated in 1995. Um, the applicant uh, submitted their narrative saying that after the last hailstorm, um, you know, there was quite a bit of damage done to the roof, uh, so it needs to be replaced. Um, in addition, they'd like to repaint a few areas and also um, fix some of the downspouts. So um, as you can see, he submitted a uh, really great images of where all the painting will be done, um, where all of the downspouts and gutters will go. Um, and I believe on page 41 of your packet is a photo report. So all the colors are supposed to match and um, all, of the, all of the work um, should preserve historic character. Nothing will change. Okay, thank you. Uh, do any of the commissioners have a question for staff? Uh, Commissioner Bagwell? Uh, is this in preparation for a tax credit application? From my knowledge and discussions with the applicant, um, most of the the fixing will be um, covered by insurance, so they are not seeking a tax credit application. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Uh, Commissioner Hardy? Uh, yeah, in, in a couple of the photos, there are some fairly noticeable stair step cracks in the brick. I just wondered, if, is that being addressed in this application in any way or? It's just dealing with the re-roofing and the painting associated with it. Those cracks in the brick were not um, brought forward by the applicant at this time. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bagwell, did you have any more questions or no? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, if we don't have any more questions for staff, we'll give the applicant an opportunity to uh, present any information that they would like to. Uh, I think the certificate of appropriateness pretty much says it all. Um, we were instigated to do this because there are chunks, approximately one inch large chunks of the roof falling into our breakfast area <laughs> on our porch. Um, so I'm I'm fairly convinced of the soundness of the um, plan. Now, um, the original shingle will have to be taken off because in order to do code, uh, we're told that you have to do a single layer of um, the new tar or tile. Um, so we're following the uh, company's recommended uh, procedures. And I understand the companies that do this work, their procedures are aligned with with the procedures that are already pre-approved um, in the workflow here. Um, so that's the roof. And then all of the rest of the work is sort of cascading from the roof, the soffits and the downspouts and the gutters all are consistent, will need to be taken out and put back in. And so that's why we're redoing those. And yes, uh, insurance does pay for everything except for the, uh, except for the deductible. So, um, so everything is sorted financially. Great, thank you. Uh, are there any questions for the applicant by, uh, from any of our commissioners? I don't see anything. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, so at this point, we will again uh, open up the public hearing portion of the meeting for anyone outside that would like to speak on this particular topic. Uh, so again, the instructions are on the screen and we will 
Uh, wait around for a few more minutes and to, to see if there's anyone that would like to speak regarding this application. Chair, there are no uh, individuals or guests in our waiting area, so I would say um, we'll give it just a couple seconds here for the slide to disappear from the live stream and then you can begin. Okay. All right. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, we will close the public hearing portion. Um, is there any further discussion or comments from our commissioners? Don't see anyone. Uh, and so I would uh, entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner Bagwell. Uh, you might. Thank you. I move approval of the Certificate of Appropriateness for 1005 Third Avenue, the Kistler Gunning House, as proposed. I have a second. Second. All right. Second by Commissioner Hardys. All right, all in favor, if you can raise your hand and say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? None. So again, our motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you, sir. May I have one final question? Absolutely. So now that the certificate of appropriateness is approved, do I need to do anything further to initiate work? Do I need a copy of that or post it or any, are there any procedures or is this a sort of is this the trigger point right here? Uh, Ms. Kruger, could you respond to that, please? Hi, Matthew. Once we have um, everything finalized, we'll send you the, the formal document with signatures for the COA, and then you're free to initiate work as soon as you have that. Okay, so if I schedule work to begin in, say, 10 days, is that a reasonable approach? Yes, I can get you the document in time. All I have. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we will move on to item number seven, our 
our information and discussion items. Uh, according to the agenda, we have a uh, presentation by Ms. Uh, Erica Dubik, Preservation Planner, History, Colorado. Welcome. Thank you. How is everyone doing this evening? <laughs> um, so Jade asked me to come and talk to you guys about tax credits for a couple of reasons, just to uh, give you this brief overview of the program, the different types of credits and the uh, ins and outs of them. Um, also to, I think we've had some discussions about whether or not Longmont wants to continue reviewing tax credits locally. Um, so that decision is up to your city council, um, but obviously they would, I think, take a recommendation from you as the preservation commission. So I'm just gonna go through this really quickly. Um, I should also mention that I'm also at this meeting for your uh, quadrennial evaluation. So fortunately you guys had two public hearings, so that was easy and uh, already done. So I'll get together with Jade after this and and we'll have a discussion and hopefully get you guys your evaluation completed soon as well. So uh, let's go ahead to the next slide. So hopefully you guys are already familiar with what a re rehabilitation tax credit is. So it's a tax credit, it directly reduces the amount of tax owed to the state government. Um, so it's a dollar for dollar tax reduction based on a percentage of the total project cost. So for instance, if you had a $100,000 project, um, with $100,000 qualified expenses, it would be 20% credit would be $20,000. And I'm not even going to explain what rehabilitation is because I think you guys already know that as well. So next slide. So there's basically three types of credits. Um, there's the federal credit, which is managed by the National Park Service and partly by our office. And that is only for income producing properties, commercial properties. Uh, but here in the state, we have the commercial and the residential credit. So as a CLG, you guys are welcome to review the residential credits as you guys have done tonight. Um, and then the commercial credits are reviewed by us at the state. Next slide. And so, like I said, the commercial credit is for income producing properties. So that can also be, you know, rentals that are used for housing. Uh, that can be commercial storefronts, industrial buildings, all types. Residential, that's gonna be your owner-occupied housing. So if you have an owner-occupied residence that is also being used, for instance, maybe part-time as an Airbnb or a VRBO, um, that's when you'll wanna give us, or give Joe a call, I should say, um, and discuss you know, that situation before you would want to issue a tax credit. Next slide. So obviously you're not going to read all these because you guys already know these. Uh, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation are what we use um, to decide what is qualified expense or what can be approved as a qualified expense for the tax credit. And so I believe you guys already use these for your, um, when you're reviewing properties for your certificate of appropriateness. So hopefully you guys are familiar with these already. Next slide. And so qualified rehabilitation expenditures, there's two different definitions, depending if it's a commercial or residential property. The, for commercial properties, it follows the IRS definition. Uh, for residential, it is specific to the state credit. So that's exterior improvements and interior improvements undertaken to restore, rehabilitate, or preserve the historic character of a qualified property. So that's a pretty broad definition. Next slide. So here's some examples of what is allowable and not allowable. Um, essentially materials and labor used on the historic building are going to be allowable for, uh, for QREs. Not allowable is purchasing the property, adding an addition to the property, uh, landscaping and site work. There is some, some wiggle room on that, but again, uh, that's when you might wanna give us a call so we can discuss. Uh, personal property, so basically anything someone can take and uh, remove from the property, not going to be included, uh, just like removable fixtures, and then legal fees as well. Next slide. Um, so here's a lot of information on one slide, and I have a few of these for each of the tax credits. Um, so this is just a quick overview of the federal one. So again, you guys would not be uh, dealing with this, but you might have you know, property owners in the community that are interested in this. So it's great to, 
to be aware of that. Uh, it's a 20% credit, again, only for commercial, commercial properties. Um, and a good thing to keep in mind if you're talking to someone about this is that these credits cannot be sold uh, like we'll get to with the state credits. So you wanna make sure people are aware of that difference um, and that they can only take 20% per year for the first five years. So you can't take it all in the first year like you can with the uh, state tax credit. Next slide. So the state commercial tax credit, again, great to be familiar with. If you have business owners uh, in your community that would be interested in this, the property will need to be listed on the national, state, or local register. Uh, it also needs to be 50 years old. Uh, the Let's see, we have two different uh, pots of money available for the commercial credit, uh, both for projects over 2 million and projects under 2 million. So that's really nice. It protects those smaller projects, make sure there's still money left over for them. Uh, there are some bonuses available if your county has been declared a disaster area in the last six years, uh, and then 10% for rural, but obviously you guys wouldn't apply there. And then uh, there's a 1 million per year property cap and 5 million per year uh, for each of the different uh, levels. And so these credits can be transferred or sold. And sometimes we see nonprofits also um, getting these credits for their projects and then selling them to either fund the project or you know, provide funding for the nonprofits. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind when you're talking to community members. And there is no recapture period for these and they can be taken up for up to 10 years. Oh no, you're good, next slide. <laughs> Uh, so same uh, thing applies for eligibility for the residential. Uh, it needs to be a property owner or a tenant with a five-year lease. Again, we have those bonuses depending on the disaster area or if they're located in a rural area. Um, I think you guys no longer have the, um, it's been more than six years since the flood, right? So I think you guys are down back down to 20%. Um, and as you discussed early in the meeting, uh, there is a minimum of $5,000 that needs to be spent, and there is a maximum of $50,000 per property, um, and that resets after 10 years or a change in ownership. So you could get your $50,000 in credits and sell it to someone else, and they could get another $50,000 the next year. Um, there's no limit on how much money is available for the residential credits, so that's a really nice thing. You can also take that for up to 10 years. Uh, but they can't be transferred. They have to stay with the owner. And again, there's no recapture period. Next slide. So hopefully you guys are pretty familiar with the review process. Uh, for the state credits, it's, it's very simple. We just have the part one, which is what you guys reviewed tonight. And then part two, uh, which is when you approve the work that was completed to make sure it uh, goes along with what they said they were gonna do. Uh, the federal one is very similar. Part one is just where we certify that the building is historic. Part two, where you say what you're going to do. Part three, where you prove that you did what you were going to do. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, the, the main uh, part of these applications are just providing photographs and written descriptions of the work being done so that you guys can make um, a decision, a knowledgeable decision based on those photographs and, and descriptions. Next slide. So that, I mean, that's basically it. That's the tax credit program in a nutshell. Obviously, as you guys know, and as came up at your meeting tonight, there's, there's a lot of intricacies, a lot of questions. Um, I can only answer the easy ones. All the difficult ones you need to send to Joe. <laughs> and that's his email address there. So you can write that down. Um, but, you know, I, Jade and I have a lot of conversations uh, and e emails back and forth about tax credits all the time. So uh, yeah, if you guys ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. That's what we're here for. We'd much rather answer your question than have something go wrong. So yeah, that's all I have. Unless of course there's questions. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, I did actually have one quick question um, about the um, eligibility for either the state or for either the state commercial or residential. Um, for example, the application that we reviewed tonight was not listed on the register, but it was a contributing building in a historic district. And so does that, is that applicable for 
the state tax credit, either commercial or residential? Yes, if it's in a historic district and it's a contributing, bu contributing building, then yes, it is considered to be listed and therefore is eligible for the tax credits. Okay, perfect, great. Thanks for that clarification. Um, anyone else have a, a question for Ms. Duda? No, uh, I'm not seeing anybody. Thank you very much for, for taking the time to present that information to us. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, all right, well, then we will move on to our next item agenda which would be comments from the HPC commissioners. So do any commissioners have anything that they would like to share with our group? Uh, Ms. Commissioner Bagwell. Uh, I, I would just like to um, uh, welcome Jay tonight. Look forward to our new staff member. And I'd also like to, uh, since we didn't get to say goodbye to Karen Bryant, uh, just to acknowledge in the record, uh, appreciation for her services um, for the past several years and uh, wish her well. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other HBC Commissioner comments, statements? No? Okay, uh, then, Let's see, Councilman Rodriguez, do you have anything that you would like to share with us? Uh, nothing in particular, but thank you guys uh, for your service and uh, making yourselves available for these weird Zoom meetings in commission. They're just as equally awkward at council, I assure you. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, well, I think all in all, we did okay. Um, luckily, it wasn't too complicated of a meeting. So thank you all for... Uh, for bearing with us. Uh, so given that, that comes to our final item on the agenda, which is adjournment. Do I have a motion for to adjourn? Oh, sure, I so move. Okay. Motion, second. Second. Second Hardy's all in favor, say aye, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? I doubt it. Thank you very much uh, <laughs> to you all and uh, have a, a wonderful month until the next time we do this. And <laughs> nice thank to you, see everybody. Good night. Thank yeah. you. Good to see you all. Yes. Thanks to Susan, bye. too. For, thank for you, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Susan and Jade. Yep. And Maria, bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next month. Bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Take care.